Well, this is uh, my table palette and I'm going to explain just uh, the way I prepare my colors and the way I get ready to work. These are the main colors that I use. Uh, I place them kind of like in groups. This is uh, the dark tones. I don't use black, so I use this uh, burnt oxide transparent, uh, mother carmine solid tip, uh, violet, same, indigo, dark blue, and sub green. Mm -hmm. Those are like the dark colors that I used to make uh, a substitute of black that you always have color in it and depending on if you need it colder or warmer you use more or, or less of each component. Then I use the typical white sometimes I use a nice brand when I have to do the, the little brights on faces. Uh, the two colors that I use to mix to have volume volume of uh, colors of light colors are the two yellow maples, uh, the normal one and the kind of reddish. Mm -hmm. These are my uh, favorite colors. To me, they're very, very important. These, these are the cadmiums, cadmium colors. Well, three cadmiums plus the, the still the grain yellow. They're good for me because uh, to mix them with white, to make the white uh, a beautiful light bed turn towards orange or yellow or something. If you do it with these colors, they're gonna keep the cleanness, the cleanness of the white. If you do it with normal uh, yellow or orange, it's gonna turn to greenish, uh, ochre, something like that. So I love them. They're expensive, but they last a long time and, and they're really, really important to me. These are my two favorite tones for, for the cold parts of the skin. The uh, Verde Compuesto in English is uh, uh, compound green and this is uh, royal blue. This is really important too. Depending on if you want the little shapes of the face uh, to turn towards uh, bluish or greenish, these two tones will give you a subtle and wonderful and clean uh, color for the skin. And I, they both mix really good with the magenta that I use a lot too. Sometimes too much maybe. <laughs> and then I have, those are the main colors. And then I have this four more. I, I, eat, I love to try all kind of colors that I may get to know. But with the time, these four colors, I usually add them to the basics. This is a normal gray. Titan gray. This is a no. How do you say? Talafianina turquoise blue. It's beautiful. I'll I'll show them in a minute with you, to you and and on the palette so you can see exactly the color. Because sometimes what you see on the on the tube is not what is going to come out. And this is uh, a really nice one too. Uh, Started to use it a few times. Few months ago and, and I like it sometimes for some part of the skin when you want it warmer close to the uh, ochres that kind of greenish and it's burn silver green mm -hmm. and this is an, an oxide yellow flake mm -hmm. and these are the colors that I use I'm gonna place them around I'm really a disaster I, I don't have an exact play, place for any of them I sometimes place it black one, the, the dark ones there, the light, the light tones here. I'm, I'm not very organized about that. But what I need to be really organized, and I'll show you, is here, when I create my crazy pool of colors. That I'll show you in a minute. Well, here we got them all. White, yellow, maple, yellows, uh, magenta, three cadmiums, still the green yellow, uh, there. Oh, what's the name in English? Uh, the burnt cinnabar green, grey, compound green, royal blue, uh, talothianina, turquoise uh, blue, uh, the oxide lake, the 
transparent oxide, uh, mm, alizarin, something like that, violet, sub green, indigo, and this one is the mother carmine solid dip. Goodness, I'm so bad with the names in English. Okay, now we're gonna start with the mixing in a minute. Well, now I'm gonna prepare here that little pool that I was talking about with all the colors that I'm gonna use or close to those colors. I used to start with this uh, Naples yellow, the red is, I like it for the beginning and I create this little mix with some white and uh, magenta and uh, my favorite frail blue they make a nice color to start with is this kind of lilac purple ish and from there and I start to move slightly to a different colors if you wanted more oranges greenies this is the still the grain it could also it could also be the the cadmium orange mm -hmm. if you want to bring it to the greenish it's also nice and again some magenta will take it to this interesting part this colors are really nice not as something that you're gonna apply directly but if you just give a touch of gray you're gonna create because sometimes you get too much color and you want it a little more subtle or uh, desaturated so you put some gray and then you apply turn towards this kind of oxide reddish possibility that will work on the warmer parts and now I feel the need here of some carmine and right here it's an orange so what I'm trying to create here I don't know if you can see is uh, like a path of uh, different tones that I may be Needing in some time when I'm working on the painting, and of course, I can switch this with that and move all around and create a thousand different colors. Uh, but what I'm trying to get is kind of a, a wide scope to have easier access to anything I may need. So, for example, I can bring here this uh, green, and this will work nice with let's try this. This is not too strong, but that's the nice part of it. This is the yellow lake. And I'm gonna, gonna go to the greenish tones. And again, the magenta will kill part of that green aspect and will bring it to more purplish. And now on that part we can move towards I can find the spatula and then move toward the uh, reddish I like the purple and I like the violet because with little touches they give that tone, that aspect of uh, coldish, bluish, but they keep the colors clean. Huh? This is maybe too purple, but it's good to have it there, just to mix it in the future or sometime with some of the color that I may need. You know? And we could get something colder right there, because everything is way too warm. And this blue, this wonderful royal blue, Give me this. So. Carmine again. We'll give me these other possibility. This way. I hope I'm not coming out of the scope. Let me see. Oh. 
sorry. And now, we'll keep going here. Uh, let me see. We can come with some gray. Or this. To create like a bed. Without much color. Because sometimes we, when we prepare this colors, we, everything is full of color. And sometimes you don't have this on our face. It's every, everything is much more subtle. So what, I, what you do sometimes is you use the gray or the yellow Naples, the Naples yellows, or some white to desaturate uh, all these colors, okay? But you got them there, and they're clean, so you can use them whenever you need them. And look, for example, this mix with just a touch of the reddish will give you this interesting thing. And to me, this is much cleaner than using the burn, the amber burns or the amber, the raw colors on the earth that are much dirty to me. There's the purple. Okay, and now what we need, we always need this uh, mix of colors I told you about. This is the way I made the substitute of the black. So far I'll use a sub-green, violet, I'll get some carmine, and if you want it even warmer, you can get this red oxide, and we would need I don't know, I've got here, some indigo, we've got, got here. And here we go. So, I don't know if you can appreciate it, but you got all different kind of, uh, almost black here, but it's reddish, violet, viral, violetish. <laughs> and this, since it's done with colors, not with black, you can use it nicely to make any of these tones darker and it will still be a clean color if you get a partly mm, greenish tone you will you can come here and get these parts darker or some red oxide and you can do the transition from the almost black tone to the medium tones, huh? for example, we're working there with this brownish, purplish. Let's try to mix with the, uh, the carmine sun violet. And you can keep, keep it going until you get to this level of, with the indigo, this level of almost black. And you cover the whole scalp. If you take a look at it, let me see. I don't know if we are. You can see the whole thing here. But this is what we have now. And I'm still missing here, of course. I kept this white. This is, this is uh, uh, all, all, all Holland. This is a nice brand. And I used a patch of white with some. Cadmium color. What we're gonna have here is gonna be like a base of uh, slightly enlightened white, but really clean, that you could mix with any of these colors to lower the level of their color. Hmm? So maybe I, we got pretty much everything we need here. Maybe we've gone way too dark, we would need something, but if we need something in between, it's going to be easier, really easy to get one of these tones, for example, look, you can get this, bring it here, get some orange, and you're going to get, with the white, some medium tone, still clean, still with color, and then add some white, and you're going to have 
And when you go to brandish and you loosen the collar, you can add a little touch of breath cutting. You're going to go to that nice tone, for example, for leaves or cheeks. And uh, you can also add, of course, the orange or the magenta. That's how we do here. So that way we're going to have. Kind of those media tones. And I want something colder here. With this. You see, they could always mix together and create this crazy world. Now I can start painting because pretty much everything I need or I see that I could use in my portrait, I'm going to have it here. And I'm going to keep in my hand a bunch of uh, brushes and I'm not going to get them dark, get them dirty, sorry, because. If I get a brush that is going to work on this tone, I'm not going to change that. Maybe, maybe I'm going to work, I'm going to make it change to that or this, but I'm not going to go here with that brush. If I'm going to need that color, I'm going to put the brush back in my hand, get another one and use it for this color and the closer range of colors huh, of that area. But I'm not going to jam because that's a way to get the, the brushes dirty and then at the end the paint is going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the way I work and now if you're interested I would love to show you the way I work in the painting but I don't want to get a thing way too long and you've been waiting way too much. So I hope I could put this all together uh, between today and tomorrow and send it to you and see if it works. Okay? Thank you Michelle for your patience. Bye-bye.